So my name's Peter Dobbins, I'm 32 in my last year sadly, third year of Human Life Sciences and I'm running for President at Queen Margaret Union. Um, tell us what experience do you have for the role of President? For the experience for the role of President is more based on the experience of what I'm going to offer. So what I'm offering is a recording studio, a record label and four nights a week live music, although that could be slightly problematic in the current state. But like, I've promoted, I work for a, um, a club in Soho as a promoter, work for a club in Stoke Newington, a bar in Stoke Newington as a promoter. I've been a professional musician since I was, well, since being an adult. I've been recording, I'm a writer, we're having a release, I have a society, a university society, which is called Yog Records, and we have our first release coming out, which, funnily enough, I have put a pre-release online, just for the sake of the campaign. It's not been quite mastered, but I'm also a recording engineer. I also own all the equipment of which I can put into Queen Margaret Union as a recording studio. I can soundproof the room. Um, I've, I've got done a lot in the building trade growing up. Um, I can work hard, I can graft, which is more important for actual, in the terms of labor. So for what I'm running for, um, is, is my, I've got a long history in music. For the actual role of president, of running a building, uh, my job roles that probably the one that we relate to it most is running a hotel in St. Enoch Square. Lovely place, nothing against my bosses, very nice people, but it's not the nicest of hotels. And, but I was running it basically. I weren't called a manager, but I was there on my own for the majority of the time that I was working there, so I had a basically managerial role. And obviously having to deal with difficult people and all this sort of stuff, and people manage as well. And so for the other roles of president, the one role that I'm actually a little bit apprehensive about for the role of president is standing up and talking at the Freshers' Fair. And because that would be the biggest crowd. I've played to like thousands, but I've never actually stood up and spoke to thousands of people. And the thing is, is when you're playing, it's like a driving test. Oh, un unlike a driving test, sorry. See, the driving test, you start at the beginning. You start your driving test and you're nervous throughout. When you're playing, if you get up, you're nervous about the first song. And once you're warm and you're ready and you can have it, that's it, the nerves are gone. With public speaking, it's like a driving test. The nerves stay with you throughout. And it's hard, that, that, that feeling just below your heart when it's vibrating, it's hard to stop that from going through to your thingy, from going through to your voice. Yeah. Trying to stop me now, haven't you? <laughs> Come on, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so yeah, you mentioned in your manifesto that you wish to convert one of the committee rooms into yeah. a recording studio and establish a record label, as yeah. you've mentioned. Why would this benefit a student union and its members? Basically, what it's going to do, first of all, is pull people towards the union. So the part of the record label is going to be, say we'd have like four bands at a time, signed in inverted commas. There's no signers in, they earn money and they give it to us and we take a percentage of that money. We take a percentage of money for costs that we put out, definitely but not as in they sign in their life. And for instance, so we'd have bands outside doing a bit of busking, which is going to be a bit difficult with security, but I'm going to try it and see what they say, and they're going to, going to wing it. But, um, so it's going to pull membership in. Not only that, but the, the university has a recording studio here. Yeah, that, uni that recording studio is only accessible to sonic art students. Meaning, and I've tried to gain access to it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a um, uh, biology student, but I'm also a songwriter and a musician, and I've not been catered for in the entirety of the university, even though they have the equipment there. To get into the um, concert hall, I can't get into the concert hall, uh, book the concert hall, because I'm not a music student. So there's, there's Thousands of music students, or musicians, that are not music students at this university are not being catered for, and they're just about to raise the, the price to nine thousand pounds. They should be catering for people like that. So, and what we're going to be doing is recording for free, and it's not just recording audio recording. It's for things like, if um, say graduation, a lot of people can feel difficult about getting their graduation photos taken with all, everybody else around. With me, because we've got like a Canon 6D. Like I have all the equipment myself. With me, with a Canon 6D, you come up and say, here yeah, Pete, like, I feel a bit thingy, can we just take a little walk around campus with me little red, uh, the, I don't even know what the, the cylinder, the red cylinder. Take a little walk around ca campus and get a few photos taken, we do it, you know. Don't get me wrong, it's going to be the same photos for everybody. But it, is, it, it can supply many demands, supply for many of the demands of the people at this university, not just the union, it's university wide. Are you going to mention the sleep zone? So, can I stop there and just yeah. ask briefly, do you think that your plan to start this record label and embed it in the union 
is beneficial to the majority of people who use the union because it seems to me that I as a member of QM and many others are not musicians and that is of no benefit to me in any way. The benefits for the people such as yourself is the recip recipient side of music. So when you're going in, you're, with these bands that are being put on, you're going to be experiencing completely new bands. Like did you mention, see a bit about the foyer, yeah? Where you go in, there's going to be a stereo and all that for you to go and listen to the music. So I feel quite sure in saying that you're going to be interested in some type of music. So for the people such as yourselves, it's the recipient side. Which, we, we, you're the lifeblood of the label, because without the recipient side, we have no label. No one to go and pay the 50p or whatever is on iTunes to support the bands. And not only that, but if you look at the... the, the um, the glass cabinet, which has been covered since I've ever been here. What a beautiful glass cabinet, they could be using it for anything. Whatever you want to use it for, just use it. Don't cover it up. And they've covered it up and I'm thinking of old violins, a bit of um, sawdust on the floor and all this sort of stuff. And just don't cover it up, which is what they're doing. But what it comes down to really is business etiquette. Yeah, and seeing, especially if you want to talk about the beer garden as well. More importantly, it's, it's controversy around that though. But it's all there to be discussed and, and to be the, the, the kinks to be ironed out of it. Can I stop you there again and just say that, do you think that your plan to start this record label is going to save the QM financially? We published an article at the start of this year saying that the QM could close in three years from financial losses. And it seems to me a record label that deals largely in people who are unknown is not going to create enough income to save the QM from that financial debt. Um, well, there's two avenues to this, yeah. Firstly, is that at this point in time that room is only not one single bean at all. And what I could do is open it up to outside people at discounted rates, which I think a discounted rate for recording at a decent rate is £10 an hour and free for students. If it becomes a point where we seriously need money, I could just be taking the odd sale on a Sunday, bang it out just for people from outside, and the other six days of the week is for the students, which then means it's going to be taking money. But the thing is, is it's drawing people in. It's drawing people into the union. They've not got, that, union has not got, that union's not got a problem with getting people in. Yeah? That union's got a problem with making people spend money. That's where their problem comes. They're banged out generally, yeah? But people are not spending money. With the um, gig scene and the clubbing scene, people get in, they drink a few beers, have a laugh, and getting them at that bar and having a drink and listening to music from seven onwards. At the moment, you can go in, probably both of them, maybe not um, the beer bar, go in there at seven o'clock on a Saturday night and it's completely dead. I'm saying start the bands at 7 o'clock on a Saturday night. They finish at 10, then the club, then, then the DJs come on. And the thing is, is the, 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 the financial aspect, and because that fact that that's going to close in three years, I could run, yeah, and say that this, I could save it with this. And not only that, but um, like with the other plans for like the, um, the sleep zone, again, putting people in. It's just getting people in, and, uh, and obviously the bar will be open for when they need a drink. But it's not quite true. They've been saying that it will close in three years for the past 20 years. It's, that's been going on. And it's not happened. What is true is that I believe is that the university are going to get their tendrils into it, which has already started. And they're saying at the moment that they're doing up the windows and all that just because they, they need to do them up. But they've just done up three rooms at the top at Queen Margaret Union for, uh, for um, lectures and stuff like that. And now they're doing up the windows. We know that the mathematics building is going down. We know that the uh, um, location, location, location is key. And Queen Margaret Union's location is key for the university. Look where it is, right by the main campus. Admitting it's a bit of an ugly looking building, but we love it for its ugliness, you know what I mean? And then, so that is a possibility that the university are going to get in. If, if I get in and keep the union for what it was, back in the day, in its heyday, was a live music venue. I was, I was in, the, in the pub and I was speaking to a lady who used to work at GUU, at the time when QMU opened, yeah? And they said, oh yeah, they were dead, because everybody was going and seeing the bands. Now, the vice versa has happened with um, uh, the Hive. So, do you think, like, obviously you have a strong vision for bringing people back into the union, which is excellent, however, you have mentioned that you think the university is getting its tendrils into QM. Mm -hmm. Does you, do you think this attitude is going to be like helpful going forward when you will have to work with the university regarding funding? Well, I'll have to work with the university regarding that in a way that I'm not going to take um, the takeover of the building. I won't take that from the university. Their funding is going down anyway, they're cutting the funding. They can't just say, oh, because you've said that like, um, you think that we're trying to get over the building, we've got to cut your funding. It's getting cutted. And the thing is, I, I, I would call them out on it. I'd say, and the thing is, is if someone don't call them out on it, in another five years, or as you said, three years, which I don't think is quite true, but maybe, we won't have a union unless someone stands up to these people. And the person who's got to have to stand up to these people, I must admit, have to be able to um, put your argument across right. That is key.
Yeah, you can't just go in there, row, 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 row. You got to put it across correctly. But the thing, and what would, that would do with the presence of a label of, of a recording studio, which is supplying all these thousands of musicians in this union, means that there's a good reason for that to stay open because we're supplying um, a service to all these people that otherwise can't access it, even though we have a recording studio here that you can't access. How about that being a writer? I remember telling my dad when I got into university, I'm going to university, I'm going to have this organisation behind me, behind my writing, they're going to make me something, and do they? Emailing these people, like, oh, I don't mean to swear, piss off, no, piss off, they don't want to know, and which is despicable, absolutely despicable, especially when it comes down to um, the room booking, and basically, oh I won't get into that, it's another argument. Well, so, I've got another okay. question for you there actually, so you're talking about bringing students into the union with the recording label, which would be wonderful, but you're talking about bringing them in for the music and the drinking culture, yeah. do you agree that there's been a decline in the drinking culture at university in the last maybe five or ten years? Um, I would cut that down. I think it's been the last three years. When I started here four years ago, QM was generally banged out. Yeah. So do you think that your plan to increase people coming in for the bands and for the drinking is therefore unviable because people are not interested in the drinking culture anymore? No, because there's still the live music culture. And don't get me wrong, if they well, I would was about to say that they're going to turn up and drink JTOs. But But the, um, the thing, and this is another point of contention, yeah, is that uh, university society is allowed, I believe it's 10 or 20% of their membership to be non-members. So the people, um, some of the people, 10 to 20% of the people coming in to, to be viewing the gigs are not going to be students. So we're going to be putting in that custom as well. You know, it's not just the student custom that we're going to be relying on, it's the custom of, of, of Glasgow, the West End. And there's, don't get me wrong, there's one other good live music venue which is kicking every Friday and Saturday night at the Record Factory. Go down there, it's kicking, and they've got it right though. They've got it set up right, they know what they're doing. And there's no reason why we can't jump on that, you know? Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you are saying that making these club nights will bring in students? Not just that, no. That ain't, that, that's one part of it. That's one, one part, part of it. it. But Given that the QMU has struggled with attendance at its club nights for the past three to four years, mm. and it's subsequently the club nights have shut down, why do you think that yours would be successful? Now? Because you've got me. Right. Yeah, I've promoted in uh, Soho in London. Don't get me wrong; not every gig was was fantastic. And as I've already stated this, and I promoted in uh, Stoke Newington. Yeah, and what I've learned first, the key thing that I've learned from that is how to do it wrong. You've got to learn how to do it wrong before you can learn how to do it right. The other key piece of information is to ram it in their faces. Yeah, I won't be like, and no disrespect to the past presidents, but and, and the people that running the business up there, but they're generally sitting on their hands. Yeah, what I'll be doing with the bands that are signed to the label. Another thing, part of the, them being signed to me, uh, because if you look up um, River Sticks MySpace in Soho, I sold around about two or three thousand of my EPs. I would like I was about like twenty between twenty and twenty three years of age. I went, I cut a little EP, went into some, and what I would do is with exterior headphones, go up and say, hello, nice to meet you, I'm a writer, would you listen to my music? So about, in about, must have been three or four years, I sold two or three thousand, which equates to about 0.01 a day, but that's neither here nor there. And so I can chat to people, cold cell, and what, um, with the bands that are signed to me, I'll take them down on Buchanan Street, I've got the um, deep cycle batteries, 120 or 130 ampere deep cycle batteries so we can set up a band on Buchanan Street. I've got the blackboard which you're going to see in a couple of nights at QMU funny enough because I'm going to use it to promote this single that's up on the thingy. A blackboard like this and like this so that the bands might um, buy bands Facebook and all that sort of stuff and how much they're sending their CDs for is on there. The bands have to get their own flyers printed or depend on how financially stable the label is we might be able to get some stuff printed. And so when they're playing I am out there so stopping people, saying hello, uh, obviously you're, um, you're allowed three steps, which I make the biggest steps I can possibly can before you start pissing people off, yeah, legally. You're allowed to walk with them for three steps, so I'll just make sure they're big giant steps. I'm, if they don't want to talk then, then it's gone. In all honesty, there's no point wasting your time on people who don't want to talk. And stopping them, saying, hey look, this is going on at QM, come down, and creating a buzz. It's, you see, you're seeing the fact of the finance as the root cause. The finance is not the root cause, it's the buzz that is the root cause. If you sort out the buzz, you sort out the finance. We can create a, a buzz between G, a QMU and GUU. This, and I'm talking about working with GUU. Like, for instance, if a band's going to be playing down QMU at 7 o'clock on, on a Friday, and I know that it's going to be completely dead at 4 o'clock 
on a Friday. I want the best for that band, so I'm going to take him down the beer bar where I know it's going to be banged out at 4 o'clock on Friday and put them on down now. And I must admit, they're not going to be very willing to allow me to say, oh, and they're going to be playing at QM in a minute. But we work together and get it for free. They, they, get, my, they get me for free down at GUU. They get the bands that I'm booking for free. So you're clearly very committed to this vision. However, if you fail to create this buzz and if you fail to generate the revenue that you expect, do you have other avenues to explore financially? Financially, the... What um, other plans would you have if this fails? The... I don't believe in failure. If I start thinking of failure, and not only this come out in Scientific America, if you get a plan B, it means you don't put as much in plan A. Yeah, so failure it don't happen, basically, for me. Right. Uh, final question. Do you believe that the tweets found by Glasgow Uni Election Watch Facebook group mm -hmm. are insensitive towards women and minorities who face genuine discrimination? Um, I'll take you uh, talking about the... Um, the tweet that said, why is it when I find out that women are, homes are gay that I'm more attracted to them? There was that one and there was also the one relating to sexism and racism in the 1950s. Yeah. So those two tweets, do you believe either of them to be insensitive to those groups that they discuss? And you do realise that I was talking about me experiencing sexism and racism, yeah? Yeah. So, so I'm talking about myself experiencing it. So, I'm not talking about another group, I'm talking about me who experienced 1950s sexism and racism. And would you like me to discuss that? Please do. So first, uh, well, I've dis discussed each, yeah? First of all, um, I had to live on the streets out of a tent, because, or not, don't, it weren't the root cause, but I began for rooms, which I was in that paper for, because I ended up in a tent in Kelvin Grove Park because the, because the university wouldn't allow me to go on to second year. Anyway, because uh, I had non-academic debt. Anyway, I'm going for room after room after room after room after room. Don't get me wrong, because I'm a bit scarred up and I talk like a little bit of a fucking psychopath. I don't blame people for saying, I don't want you living in my flat. But, um, what had happened, uh, enough for me to think this is a little bit unfair now, I'd ring up and say, no, we're only taking women. No, we're only taking women. I'd turn up and think, oh no, sorry mate, we're only taking women. So like, well man, I, and, and it's all well and good saying, oh no, they're well within their right to say they only want women to live with them. Yeah, you spent that night sleeping in a tent in Kelvin Grove Park because you, they only wanted women and tell me that's not sexism. Then 1950s racism, when I'm work, as I've already mentioned, working in St Enoch Hotel, yeah? You try being a loud mouth Englishman in Scotland. My first experience of the racism and, um, and with, well, the, uh, I don't think you wanted to get onto the racism. Oh, you did want to get onto the racism, didn't you? Yeah? And my first experience of racism in Scotland, which you could argue is not quite racism, I'm in the pub down the road, yeah? And I've only gone in for uh, the, um, by the um, Murano Street student for this stuff. I forget what it's called now, but it's got all the swords and that on the wall. Anyway, I've only popped in for a little whiskey. I only wanted like a little red and a little half a, half a beer and the football's on. And it's England. I thought, oh bloody hell, I weren't really watching the game and the, the pub's gone up. Everybody's cheering. I thought, oh, have they scored? I've looked up, it's the other team that scored. You could argue this is not racing, but that's, when, that's the first time that I realised, oh, there's problems here. In England, we ain't aware of, of the, this, sort, this sort of attitude towards English. Then anyway, the actual racism that I've experienced, which my good mate Federico um, would, uh, we, we, was there with me, we basically, um, this is like 2 o'clock in the morning, at the hotel, we keep getting people in, can you book us a cab, can you book us a cab, can you book us a cab, and we, got, we can't, we're not allowed to book people, well, not that we can't, we won't, because they come, they're pissed up, book, can you book us a cab, yeah, we book you a cab, mate, 10 minutes later, they disappeared, the cab turns up, and this is the cab firm that we work with regularly. Anyway, woman's coming, say, can you book us a cab, so I can't, I can give you a number, and it's gone, I don't have to take this from you. I was really don't have to take this from you. So where would you get that water from? That's my Scottish water. Started going on about the fact that I'm English being up in Scotland. So admittedly, she was pissed up, yeah, but that's never no reason for it. She, at the point when um, my, my mate Federico's like, getting into the debate, and she's gone, Pooh! and exactly like that. I didn't fake spit because I didn't want to spit at her. She fake spat at him, and I said, Miss, come on, man, that's enough now, and now I've got, to, I've got to call the police. Second time, and not only that, they weren't brave enough to come in, standing outside the bar singing rebel songs, and. F the English and all this sort of stuff as I'm sitting there at work going through that when you've got three or four skinheads standing Irish though, don't get me wrong three or four skinheads standing outside and don't let's say I was waiting for them to come in but they didn't, they bottled it and stand outside so I've experienced 1950s racism and sexism myself yeah, I know how that feels and um, the thing is with the tweets that I put out except for that one about, and which I've not actually covered the one about when women are lesbian I find them more attractive and all that First of all, it's a pure old comment off the bat, yeah? We will have to stop you there, so we're running out of time. But we will be seeing you at Hustings this next week. This is an important week. part, man. I'm sorry we're running out of time. Thank you for coming in, Peter. Thank you.